I got a goodie. I was so grateful. It's paying $56.04. And the tip is $35. They only had one rolled gold. So they have Snyder's. Let's see if it allows me to replace it. Substitute it. Can't find item. I'm going to skip. She already contacted me and said this be in touch with her if they don't have anything. Feel free to pick. Okay. We suggest finding an item. Okay. One. It accepted it. I got all the stuff that's not refrigerated first. And there was a strategy with this order because there's a lot of chips involved and you don't want to squish anything. And I also have chips underneath there, but they're not getting squished. This isn't that easy. This is a big order. Um, so now I have ice on the bottom of here. I probably will move this around a little bit, but there's plenty of room to put the cold stuff in the insulated bag and I have ice on the bottom. Here we go. That worked out well. Have all the cold cold food in there. Ice on the bottom. I shifted some things around. This is a job. Now when I get to my car, I have to bag what I can with the meat bags. And it's gonna be a lot of trips to the door. Let's see if I can use my cart when I get there. I got the stuff in the car. It took me like 20 minutes because I can't, there's a lot of potato chips. You can't squish them. There's bread. And I bagged what I could. And this was a large order. I mean, there were seven cases of those sodas, bubbly soda, gallon of milk. I got a watermelon, but I worked it right. I showed, I respected the food. I didn't just plop everything. Walking throughout the store, as my shopping cart got larger and larger, the workers were looking at me like, what is she doing? Because this is a big order, and that means less people in the store needed to perform the jobs. But I can't let an opportunity like this go by. I happen to really like Spark, and I used to work Instacart, and Instacart was, I call it bloody and brutal. This... It's just, for some reason, Spark works for me. When I was walking up to the cashier, the register, because they force you to use the, you know, scan and go. You just swipe the QR code. I was walking, because, no, the cart was heavy, so I was a little slow. And I was walking up, and she was, like, right over here. And there is also a person watching over the people scanning themselves out. And I said, oh, this is a Spark. And I know I didn't understand them, but they weren't happy about it because it's very slow in there today. And the cashier wanted something to do. And then after I scanned, you know, there was nobody around. It was quiet. They were standing right there. I said, oh, I wasn't chosen today or picked to be checked. And I mean, I was pretty much almost face to face and she completely ignored me like, don't talk to me. And that's a fact. So... I'll still be nice when I go in the store. I mean, she just dismissed me like, you're. I hear you speaking, but I won't react to you speaking. That's how she responded. So you try to make a little friendship and have a chuckle, they don't care. I'm telling you, as my shopping cart got larger, I saw a lot of workers looking at me because they were shopping and they're like, that's a spark person. You know, you can tell. I grabbed the order quick, and then I thought about it for 30 seconds, and I said, is this going to be a tip-baited order? It did cross my mind. After meeting with the woman and how nice she was, she helped me get the stuff in the house. It's a $35 tip. It's a hot one today. I'm just soaking wet. Nothing you can do about it. It's a $35 tip, and after meeting her and how kind, she told me, I have to move fast. I have family coming, 
and they're visiting and I just didn't have the time to go myself. I like to go myself. She goes, I was gonna use it on Friday. But I figured before school and Labor Day, wait till afterwards. So now she's moving fast. She goes, you know, I'm cleaning my house. I'm doing a lot. She was like, you're a good shopper. I put whatever I could in bags. She saw that I had all her cold stuff on top of ice. She really appreciated that. And she liked my car because I piled what I could up because she helped. She came to the car so it was easier. But if I didn't have a, if I didn't have that assistance, at least this ground was flat. I probably would have made three trips with the car because as you saw in the picture, there were a lot of bulky things. The big garbage bags and big boxes, bounty paper towels, the toilet paper, the small cases of soda. Well, that's all stuff I could put on the cart and then maybe put a few other bags. She liked the way I didn't have any of her chips. I took them all out of the car first. She was like, thank you. And I said, nothing squashed. I got these last. So I have no question that she's going to leave that $35 tip. She was the type of person, she made it clear I would go myself, but these apps are handy when you need them. And she was willing to pay, saying it like it is, talks about this often. She was willing to show appreciation for the service that this shopper provided. And she was impressed by the extra steps I took to respect the products that she bought. I follow the industry and I understand and it's already in the works in other states like Amazon. They, and I guess it's Walmart too. They deliver to people's homes. They are W-2 workers that are delivering to people's homes. I don't know if they're completing the shop in the store, but they're making, they're getting the products into people's homes. And the future is putting the cold in the fridge, even when the people aren't home. Amazon, that's what that's about. I remember that. So, I mean, that's the future of shopping and delivery. People are going to let employees that go through a background check and represent a company, a store, enter their homes, you know, without, it's all technologies involved to get inside of the house, put the frozen in the freezer, put the cold in the fridge, leave everything on the counter, or put the pantry stuff in the pantry. That's, that's where, it's already happening in other states, but that's where that, that's happening. It's starting to roll out more in this area. And I would think that people in store would be upset about that. Like what I experienced today, there was no reason to snub me, snub me the way that woman did. I'm very nice to them and there was nobody around. We were pretty much in front of each other's face. And I was like, don't get upset. There was no reason to do that. But I understand their concern because those workers that I passed today, the example near the cashier, they can't deliver because this was hard and I had help. And I think I'm pretty strong. Imagine delivering to apartment buildings, big, you know, big homes with a lot of steps. The heaviness, you have to be strong enough to be able to complete the job when you get to the, to the drop off. And the companies can't just hire anyone to do that. I feel they would use apps like us to do the smaller jobs. But when it reaches that point, they have their own fleet of trucks, their vans, they're dropping off products to people's homes, they're entering people's homes, they're putting products away. Well, you gotta be in tip top shape for that. People think delivering so easy. It's not, especially when you when you are expected to go to that extreme of packing everything away, because that's the future service of Amazon and Walmart. So, a lot of people won't qualify for those jobs because 
I could never take that job. But the smaller apps, I could do. The smaller jobs in the apps, I could do. So there's going to be a lot of changes. Again, another day that I never thought I was going to upload a video. I was heading home. I pulled over for two minutes. The offer came in. They are finding me items. And I'm choosing to stay. I would rather wait 10, 15 minutes instead of just driving around. I was going to head home, but I will head home after these two drop-offs. So now I'm in Uniondale. It is a Freeport drop-off, a Seaford drop-off afterwards, but it's close Seaford. I can handle that. So I'm really happy. They sent another offer that's decent pay, and I might as well earn the money. After that last Spark drop-off, I squeezed in two Ubers on the way home. Not bad for two deliveries, $20.16. This was the first for me. This delivery requires a customer passcode. Now with Uber, sometimes I get that. So, before I handed the goods over, they had to give me the passcode. It was an apartment building delivery. I've been in many buildings in Freeport. Now, this one I've been in, this is an old building. Look at this. It's very old. And when it moved and when it stopped, wow. <laughs>